So let me just give you the Cliff Notes version of why President Kennedy was assassinated. President Kennedy ran not only afoul of the CIA, but the Pentagon, the Texas oil barons, and the entire banking system behind the Federal Reserve. He was departing from the Cold War script in his dealings with Russia because he and Khrushchev, after the Cuban Missile Crisis in late 1962, had become partners in the pursuit of world peace. In June 1963, at his American University commencement address, the president announced his intention of creating the first nuclear arms test ban treaty with the Soviets, unbeknownst to the CIA and the Pentagon. Equally groundbreaking was the speed with which the treaty would be drafted and then ratified. The moment had to be seized quickly. Kennedy asked Averill Harriman to lead the American team, but it was the president himself who prepared them, making sure they understood the critical importance of what was about to occur. They were all sworn to secrecy. Once Harriman arrived in Moscow on July 14th, Kennedy would be in contact with him three or four times a day. Spending hours in the cramped White House Situation Room, Kennedy personally edited the U.S. position as if he were at the table himself. The Soviets were astonished when they realized that the American president had the power to make decisions on a matter like this without consulting any bureaucracy. That was only because Kennedy had taken matters into his own hands. He well knew that such a treaty would never occur had he worked through the national security channels of the CIA and the Pentagon. On July 25th, just six weeks after his American University address of June 10th, Averill Harriman put his initials on the first limited nuclear test ban treaty in Moscow. It would be ratified by the U.S. Senate that September, September 24th, 1963, ironically, the same day that President Kennedy and Mary Pinchot Meyer would stroll the grounds of Mary's family estate, known as Gray Towers in Milford, Pennsylvania, where the president was dedicating the Pinchot Institute for Conservation Studies. Kennedy was also going to normalize relations with Castro in Cuba. He was clearly going to extricate the United States out of Vietnam and Southeast Asia, as his National Security Action Memo 263 in the fall of 1963 had outlined. He wanted to make changes to the Federal Reserve, giving back to the U.S. Treasury its rightful power to control U.S. currency. He wanted to create a joint venture with the Soviets to go to the moon together, most threatening, however, was the fact that he planned to neuter the CIA after he was re-elected in 1964 by taking away their capacity to conduct most of their covert military actions. All of what I'm saying to you right now isn't a theory. It is based now on historical, factual events that were taking place in 1963. JFK was no longer willing to be a pawn of the national security apparatus, the Cuban Missile Crisis had changed everything. Whether you believe that President Kennedy and Mary Meyer possibly took a mild psychedelic journey together in May of 1963 isn't ultimately important. What is important was that increasingly Kennedy saw the futility of the Cold War mentality and his position as the most powerful leader in the world, along with Premier Nikita Khrushchev of the Soviet Union, both men realized that the only worthwhile trajectory was the pursuit of world peace, which they had begun together. Make no mistake about it, this is why President Kennedy was assassinated, and a villain cowboy who was on the very day of JFK's assassination on his way to being criminally indicted was waiting in the wings to take over.